Nemo Radio is on the air. A, B, C. A, always B, B, C. Closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Come after me! I'm a man! I'm 40! I could not be more excited to share this training with you today. Mastering your mindset, really understanding how to overcome obstacles and achieve your goals. There is nothing I can share with you, no tactic, no tip, no (laughs) script or template that is more important than this. Simply put, your business, your success, your happiness in life is going to be a direct reflection of how healthy or unhealthy your mindset is. So with all that said, let's get into this. Let's really understand why mindset matters. Now, this is the the truth, the universal truth that took me a long time to believe and understand, but it is for sure a critical thing you have to understand. And that's simply that your income improvement follows self-improvement. If you don't work on yourself, you're never going to have the level of success in business or life that you want because you're taking yourself everywhere you go, correct? Now, let's really get into another truth because I think this is so important, especially in today's world where everyone is posing, everyone's pretending, everyone can appear to have it all together on Facebook and you know all the different social media. This is the truth about success. I love these quotes from David Schwartz, the magic of thinking big. He says, successful people are not supermen or superwomen. Success does not require some super intellect. He says, nor is there anything mystical about success. And very important here, success isn't based on luck. Here's what success really is. I love this. He says, successful people are just ordinary folks who have developed belief, and this is mindset, in themselves and what they do. I love that. I love that. And I want you to hold on to that quote and get inspired and get fired up because the reality is we are all ordinary people. (laughs) That's that's the great thing. We're all equal in this game. And once you develop that belief and mindset, there's no holding you back. So let's get into this. Let's really dive in to this core part of mastering your mindset. I cannot wait to share this. This is also the big secret when it comes to all the motivational tools and positive self-talk and all the things and all the tactics that you may have tried and seen fail or they stopped working after a period of success. There is a reason. There's a specific reason why these tactics wear off or don't work to begin with. And that simply is you cannot outperform your self-image. Well, let me give you an illustration to really explain what I mean when I say that you can't outperform your self-image. It's really like a rubber band. If you think about, you know, positive self-talk and motivation and willpower and I'm going to do it today, it's like stretching or pulling a rubber band. But your self-image, like in this illustration, it's where the finger is, right? Eventually, what's going to happen, right? When you slip up, if the rubber band slips off your finger where you're pulling, it's going to snap back. And that's how this works with self-image. If you're only working on the external pieces, you know, motivation and willpower and positive self-talk, but you're not dealing with your core self-image, it will eventually snap back. And I've really seen this in my own experience, that the self-image will set the boundaries of individual accomplishment. Self-image will define what you can or cannot do. That's from Maxwell Maltz and Psycho-Cybernetics. He talks about this, and, and this is the rubber band effect. He says, positive thinking will work, but it has to be consistent with your self-image. At the same token, it literally cannot work if it's inconsistent with what you believe to be true about yourself, what your self-image is. That's why eventually everything snaps back like a rubber band. So we've really got to address the self-image as the core part of this. So let's start at the beginning. Let's really help you get a clear understanding of how and where your self-image is created. And it really starts early in life. And here (laughs) I'm using real life illustrations. Here I am age probably four or five years old at a t-ball game. I still remember that. So excited to play t-ball. And and really where your self-image 
image develops is these early life experiences. It's not typically because you're a kid. It's not like you're consciously developing what you think about yourself. But here's what happens. What comes into your life, the experiences you have, they become what I call your default or autopilot setting. And this self-image, what you believe to be true about yourself, really shapes the rest of your life going forward, which is right a lot to put on a kid. Um, but this is how it is. Your self-image really is built up from, this is the key thing, your own belief about yourselves, not necessarily the facts of your experience, the facts of your upbringing, really your interpretation, your belief as a kid at a very subconscious level. Now, here's what's interesting about this. Most of these beliefs about yourself, again, are unconsciously formed from past experiences, successes and failures, humiliations and triumphs, all those different things, and the way other people have reacted to us, especially in early childhood. So this is where your parents come in, right? Your mom and dad and siblings and teachers and other people. Again, you're a kid. You're really developing still these beliefs and people are modeling and mirroring to you, you know, what type of person they think you are. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Once an idea or belief about yourself goes into this picture you have, this belief, this vision of who you are, it becomes true, right? As far as you are concerned, this is the truth about you. You're a loser. You're a winner. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the facts are objectively. If you become, uh, if this gets into your mind as a picture, it becomes true. You don't question its validity, Again, it's not objective. It's not factual. You just proceed and act upon that belief as if it were true, as if it were the verdict on you, the facts. That's just it. That's how it is. That's who I am. Now, for most people, and I'm just going to share my own story, we don't necessarily have a great default or autopilot. And I'm not going to turn this into an episode of Oprah, or Dr. Phil, right? But my childhood, I had a lot of bad stuff happen. I had a lot of dysfunction and abuse and, and bad things happen to me that definitely had me develop a self-image, a default, an autopilot where I was really filled with shame and self-hate, um, a lot of self-sabotage, a lot of holding myself back, a lot of finding and focusing on the negative, seeing everything as half empty. That's really, honestly, even now as I speak to you at age 45, that is still there, right? That's that's how many decades of programming. That's the autopilot. like that. And I know it might be hard to believe, but that is. The result and where this played out for me professionally in a business was really having a revenue roller coaster. Remember that rubber band effect. And if you look at my numbers and the way that my business has gone since I went out on my own in 2012, very much a revenue roller coaster. You can see years where I started to do good, snap myself back, self-sabotage, up and down, up and down. Very, very difficult ride, very bumpy ride. And, and really all of this had to do with this autopilot kind of mindset. Again, self-sabotage, finding the negative, not following through, just finding ways to fail and then having other times where I could stretch that rubber band, really succeed, but then snap back. And that's why I really had this roller coaster kind of effect and look to my business. Now, here's the good news. I'm not alone. And if you're relating and resonating with my story, you're not alone. <laughs> Maxwell Maltz wrote this in the 1950s. And this number is probably even higher now. He said at least 95% of people have their lives blighted by feelings of inferiority to some extent. And this feeling is a serious handicap to success and happiness. You cannot outperform that self-image. You just can't. It, it will not allow you to. And so here's the reality. Most people, most of you watching and listening right now, do have a negative autopilot, do have a negative kind of default mode with your self-image. And there's a real problem with that because most of us run on autopilot every day, all day. And if your autopilot is negative, self-sabotage, self-hate, fear, doubt, whatever, you're running on that every day. That's what you're taking into your job, your business, your family, your life every day. That's why you're having revenue roller coaster ups and downs. That's why you can't get through obstacles or can't achieve goals. It's because we're running on this autopilot, which isn't healthy. Now, what autopilot really does to really explain this, to, to illustrate it, 
Maxwell Maltz says it this way. He says, you have this internal belief, this internal feeling that will look for external pegs to hang itself on. You know, the classic example is half full or half empty. You will either, depending on your autopilot, depending on your self-image, you're either going to see obstacles or opportunities every day. That's how you're going to look at failure. That's how you're going to look at setbacks. You're either going to see an opportunity in it or it's just an obstacle, you can't do it. It just reaffirms, again, that inner feeling. That's what you're going to be looking for with the day-to-day events of your life. So let's break this down. He says, your brain, your nervous system, really are like a computer. And they're going to lead you in the direction of images or experiences that you either think about consciously, okay, which most people aren't doing, and we'll get into this later, Or it's going to lead you into finding and seeing and experiencing images that are so much part of you that you're just led to them on autopilot. That's really where the breakthrough is on this is getting autopilot turned off and doing something else. That is what I'm trying to say loud and clear here, screaming it from the mountaintops. You've got to turn your autopilot off. And and let's really talk about this changing your self-image. Because again, all the external stuff won't matter. Motivation, positive self-talk, the rubber band effect, it's going to snap back unless you start inside, in the core with your self-image. So let's talk about this because most people will look at their self-image and think, okay, well, intellectually, I'll just fix it. But that's not how it works. The self-image is changed for better or for worse, not by intellectual knowledge alone, but by experiencing. So what I mean by this is you can't just read a book and fix your self-image, right? You have to do this creative experiencing. This is where I got stuck, to be honest with you, for years. I kept trying to think my way intellectually to a different self-image and not doing what I'm going to show you with the experiencing. So here's, again, what Maltz is saying in Psycho Cybernetics' book. Wittingly or unwittingly, you developed your self-image by creative experiencing, how you interpreted and felt about the events in your past. Here's the great news. You can change it. You can change it by the same method. Here's the thing. Your self-image results from what you've experienced, correct? Not from what you've learned intellectually. It's not about knowledge and lessons and thought. It's about creative experiencing, which we're going to talk about here in a second. Now, what this does and what you can do, and here I am in my all my little league glory. <laughs> That's me. I'm going to explain that photo in a second. But what it works, what it actually looks like, and I have a lot more training on this, is daily visualization. You literally go into what Maxwell Maltz calls the theater of your mind because we think in images. So you actually play these mental movies. You actually see and experience and daydream and imagine and kind of dream about the outcomes that you want. One of the key things to changing your self-image is that third bullet point. You replay and relive successful and happy times in your life. And that literally changes your self-image. Also, when you want to achieve goals and move forward, the final bullet point, you see what you want to happen. More on that in a little bit, but you'll actually experience that as a daydream, as a mental movie, as a visualization. Let me give you an example of this, okay, about changing your self-image. Here I am again at at that young, early childhood stage. And he says, in order to direct yourself towards success instead of failure, all you need is just one experience that made you feel good about yourself. Just one, right? He says it's as simple as if you can even, you know, remember when you were able to first tie your shoes as a kid, okay? All you need is to remember and use that one modest accomplishment. That can be the foundation, the linchpin to improving your self-image. And let me give you a real-life example of this. This is one small success that I had that I have used to improve my self-image. Here I am. Again, I told you I had this photo for a reason. North Star Little League circa 1982. Right, This is me, my first Little League team. My first at bat of Little League, I hit a home run. I, I, I hit a home run, right? It was the greatest moment ever for seven-year-old John. Uh, by the way, I never hit another home run again that season. Okay, It was, a, it was like a one-shot, lightning struck, hit the ball perfectly, ran around the bases. But what I found was when I would sit and visualize, I, this was one modest accomplishment, small success that I so vividly remember. So I would sit in my 
chair. I would put on some kind of headphones to block out the noise, and I would replay that seven-year-old childhood memory as a movie in my mind. And it's important to bring in all the details, the sensory emotions, all of that. So I would see myself hitting the ball. I would feel the bat in my hands. I would feel the oversized helmet bouncing on my head as I ran around the bases. I would hear my you know, steps, uh, feet scraping the dirt. I would hear the parents in their lawn chairs cheering. I would see myself bouncing around the bases. I still remember when I rounded second base and the ball was still rolling in the outfield and the kid was chasing it, I started crying. Like I had tears of joy because I knew I'm going to get a home run. Oh my God. Like I've never done anything like this. Tears of joy. So I re-experienced that. I feel those emotions internally here at age 45, what, 38 years later, I see myself rounding third. I feel myself stomping on home plate and the noise it made. And I feel my you know seven-year-old teammates mobbing me and hitting me on the head. And I relive it as a moment. What that does, that five-minute mental movie, whatever it is, all of a sudden, my brain is just flooding endorphins. I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling like I can conquer the world. I'm reminding myself, you have what it takes. You are successful. You came through. And I feel great. Like, I literally change my brain chemistry. This is how our brains work. This is how powerful visualization is. I'll give you another example. Another example of how you use and reprogram your self-image through these creative mental movies. Here is how I overcome self-doubt and self-sabotage in a fear of failure. Again, that's typically my autopilot is holding myself back, self-sabotage, self-doubt, all again from the childhood negative things. So how do you overcome that? Well, I have a very, very vivid memory, again, from early childhood, and I've told this story in other places before, but it all has to do with an eighth grade baseball game. Now, I loved baseball baseball growing up. I loved playing. And in practice, I was a great player. I could hit line drives. I could really, you know, catch and field and play great. But I was afraid during games to swing the bat. I had this immense fear of failure. So seventh and eighth grade, I would never swing. I would go up every at bat and I would either walk or strike out literally like I never swung the bat. I was that terrified. And what happened my eighth grade year, this was a real moment. It was like a movie. I can still see it uh, in my mind's eye. And this is a memory that I relive. There was a kid, I'll call him Biff, who had transferred uh, after seventh grade from our school to a rival school for eighth grade. So we were playing his team in eighth grade baseball game. He knew me. He had seen my fear of failure. He had seen me freeze up at bat during games. So when he was pitching against me, I came up to bat and he yelled so everyone could hear the team, the parents, the coaches, move in. He's afraid to swing the bat. He's not even going to swing. Everyone started laughing. Every, all the parents, the kids, the co- everyone was laughing, right? Biff was taunting me from the mound. I mean, he's a bully. That's what he does. And he's just grinning. I can still see his just, oh, I just, I was not a fan of Biff. But anyway, here's what happened to me internally. I hear the laughter. I hear the jeers, the taunts, the bully staring me down with this big grin. And I started crying. I started crying at the plate. I had tears coming down through my little rec specs. I had this, you know, 1980s uh, glasses on. And what I decided was, as Biff was winding up, I had this moment, this this debate in my head, this cave person fight or flight moment. And it was either, you know, part of me said the autopilot was like, this is the verdict on you. You're too scared. You don't have what it takes. You're just going to stand there and take three strikes. And the other part of me said another part of me rose up out of nowhere and said, bleep that you swing the bat. I don't care what happens. You are swinging at this pitch. All of this is going through my mind as Biff is, you know, unleashing his fastball right at at me and at the plate. And I'll never forget literally yelling at myself in my head and the, the voice saying swing the bat overruling the fear. I swung the bat and I hit a double. I hit it down the third baseline, past the third baseman. I ran into second base. I had tears coming down my cheeks, and I just threw my arms up in the air, and I let out like this primal scream, you know, my 12-year-old self. And my bench, my teammates went crazy because they hated Biff too, obviously. He was a bully to everyone. And I started just cheering, and, and I was taunting Biff back, and I started yelling stuff like, this is like slow-pitch softball, guys. Let's hit him around. And so then the next at bat, I came up again 
same scenario replayed. Biff doubled down on his taunting and bullying. Move in. He's afraid to swing. Move in. Everyone laughed again. And this time I was ready. I still had that fear, but I also had that voice in my head saying, you did it before. Swing the bat, swing the bat, swing the bat. So as soon as the pitch came, I swung. I hit an even better line drive into left field and got another double. Same scenario. I ran, tears of joy, screaming. Biff just humiliated, which was awesome, <laughs> and, and our team got fired up. We actually then all started hitting Biff to the point where his coach had to pull him out of the game. We scored so many runs, he got pulled out of the game, and Biff stomped off the mound. He, I mean, I'll never forget this. He threw his glove. He was crying and cursing. It was awesome. <laughs> I, I love it when a bully just gets put in his place. And that is a moment I relive that. When I am struggling with self-doubt, self-sabotage, fear of failure, before a sales call, a presentation, whatever it is, I go back and replay the eighth grade baseball game. And that reminds me, you have what it takes. You can overcome this. You are not a quitter. You're a fighter. You're a winner. It's a simple, modest story. It wasn't like it was a million-dollar deal or the Major League Baseball. But for me, for my self-image, this is how I reprogram myself to not stay in autopilot. You see this? You see the power of this? And now you might be thinking, like, how can this really work? Can you just imagine and kind of daydream yourself into a different self-image and behavior? And the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, it works. Here's why what Maxwell Maltz and others have discovered. Your brain and, and body, the human nervous system, cannot tell the difference between an actual experience and an experience that you imagine vividly and in detail. Let that sink in. The human nervous system cannot tell the difference between you actually doing the activity and just imagining it in vivid detail. Here's an example. Uh, my boys at a virtual reality place, right? They're on the Jurassic Park VR roller coaster. So they're, they're in chairs. They're wearing little headsets and pretend dinosaurs are rushing through the headsets at them. And there's fans and speakers and noise. They're screaming, right? I went on the ride. I was terrified. I felt fear. I jumped. I yelled. Why? Uh, you know, intellectually, right, I knew this is fake. This is a movie. This is just they're wanting me to imagine dinosaurs, which don't exist anymore, trying to bite me. But again, my brain, my nervous system couldn't tell the difference. This was a vividly imagined, vividly pictured experience. So your body reacts that way. It's the same reason you jump when there's a scary movie, right? Like you're imagining it. That's why this stuff works. That's how you reprogram is this creative experiencing or what Maxwell Maltz calls it is synthetic experiences. He says visualization, literally, literally, they've done the science on this. It rewires your brain. It rewires your brain. It changes your self image. That's why this works. Now, the great thing about this is it builds in new memories or new data. Remember, your brain, your body, your nervous system, it's like a computer. It's unemotional. It doesn't care what you feed it in terms of goals and visualizing and everything else. It's totally going to just act on whatever you feed it. So if you're feeding it positive memories and reliving successes, it's storing that data. It's, it's really rewiring yourself to say, oh, yes, OK, you want me to have you act as if you're super successful and you can overcome obstacles. Great. I will carry out those orders here, you know, like a computer. This is where it gets really cool. And this is where I'll share a personal story of how this happens. After you're doing this, if you're creatively visualizing, just using some of the examples I gave you today, after doing it for a time, you will be surprised, and this is true, and this happened to me, this is what Malt says, you will find yourself acting differently. You will, you'll act differently, but here's the coolest thing. It will more or less be automatic and spontaneous. You don't even have to try. You just start acting differently because again, your body, your brain, your nervous system is going to carry out the goals that you give it. And if you're feeding it these creative visions of, hey, I want you to you know, feel confident and successful and, and close this sale, you will act differently. You will spontaneously act different. So let me give you some great news. This is easy. This is easy to do. This is the great thing. And here's what Max Wilmalt says. He says, this is as it should be. He said, you don't need to try to make an effort today in order to feel ineffective and act inadequately, correct? You don't wake up and do like a negative workout and go, I'm going to hate myself today. I'm going to have shame. Yeah, let's go. Like you don't have to stress yourself to feel bad. 
So he's saying, like, your present inadequate feelings and doing, it's automatic. It's spontaneous because of the memories, real or imagined, that you've built in, right? He, he calls your brain, your nervous system, this automatic mechanism. You have fed it these kind of mental movies, these goals, these visualizations that are just there, right? And so it's going to execute on that and make sure you feel bad. Now, he says, here's the great news, it will work just as automatically on positive thoughts. It works just, it's the same, because again, it's a machine. It's not a person. Your brain, your nervous system, it is like a computer. It will work on whatever data that you put in. So if you're putting in positive, you know, success, mental movies, imagery of that, it's going to activate and carry out those kind of instructions as opposed to the autopilot, the negative. Does this really work? Well, like my story, yes. Like, again, you can see where and when I started the mindset work. And I'll tell more about this story in a little bit. But you, there's a reason my revenue is going in the direction it's going. You can see the last three years, I've gotten off the revenue roller coaster and it is skyrocketing. It's going one direction up. I have not suddenly become more talented I have not suddenly learned a new technique. I have not suddenly stumbled upon a new line of business, a new service, a new template, a new copy. I've just worked on my mindset. Like this is what's exciting about it is, again, back to that quote from the beginning, ordinary people, and I'm very ordinary, trust me, (laughs) just ask my wife, right? Ordinary people developing a belief in themselves. You can see the result, the income improvement following the self-improvement. I want to give you one more example of how I made this real. I've told this swimming pool story before, but I want to tell it again to really illustrate this point. And if you haven't heard this, you're going to see how I started to change my self-image and how that impacted my business. So I had a crazy goal. Uh, When I first got into Psycho-Cybernetics in August of 2018, and it was actually into early September, I decided, you know what would be really fun, which is crazy goal, uh, would be to build a swimming pool in my backyard. Just how fun would that be? We have three wild boys. My wife grew up going to a public pool in her neighborhood. She loves swimming. And I thought, how, what a fun, amazing thing it would be to have a pool in our backyard. So I started visualizing and daydreaming every day about having a pool. I would literally see the pool in my imagination, in my daydream. I would feel the cold water. I would hear the splashing. Uh, I would see my kids jumping in. I would hear their laughter in my ears, and I would feel great. I would feel great in the middle of that. And also, I would start to see dollars, right? I would start to see my revenue numbers changing on my monthly spreadsheets. I would see it going up to higher numbers, knowing obviously a pool is not cheap, right? (laughs) And uh, here's the reality. Now, at the time when I started this daydream, uh, here was my one of my backyard shots, right? Like this was the closest we were going to get to a you know backyard pool, right? <laughs> like that's it. I had five figures of debt. I had just come off the worst month in the you know history of my entire business. I was really struggling. I was really, really, really struggling. So there was no facts present to indicate that I was going to be able to build a swimming pool. I simply just started daydreaming. I simply just threw caution to the facts. I just ignored them, and I started visualizing how fun would that be. And I felt great every day that I did it. And even though the facts told me otherwise, I ignored those. I just kept visualizing. And I did this every single morning for 10 or 15 minutes. I would see the pool. I would feel it. I would experience it in my imagination. I would literally hear the music that I was going to play. I had a song picked out the day that we broke in the pool and I would hear it playing on a speaker, right? And we'd have a slide and we'd have all this fun. And I would just do this day after day after day. And here's what's cool. Again, the reality at the time, while I'm doing this, this is my backyard, right? (laughs) Like, nope, not there, not happening, you know, but I kept at it. I just kept doing it day after day. And it didn't matter. I just kept visualizing this scene again and again and again. And here's what happened. Again, to the point of psychocybernetics, I started acting differently. I started behaving differently without making any conscious efforts. Automatically and spontaneously, I started coming up with new ideas. I started closing sales. All of a sudden, I had more confidence. All of a sudden, one example that I always talk about is when someone would email me that they're interested in a service, 
I would just email them back and I would be very passive and polite and not, you know, just kind of hope that they would take the next step and jump in. Now, all of a sudden, when someone would email me, if I saw their phone number and their email signature, I would just call them on the spot, like instantly. The email came in. I read it. If I saw a phone number, I'd call them. And what happened was people were like, wow, that was fast. I just emailed you about your course or coaching. I'd be like, yeah, I just saw it. Let's talk. What do you have going on? And I would be all enthusiastic and energetic and confident, and I would close sales. I was doing that automatically and spontaneously. I didn't do that before, right? That was a new thing I just started doing because, again, I had this goal. I want to build a pool. I need to make sales. All of a sudden, without straining or striving, I was attracting people. I came up with new ideas. Oh, wait, I could do a done-for-you service. I could charge this. I could charge that. I'm going to pitch it. I'm going to have confidence that it'll work. And all of a sudden, new ideas and opportunities just were showing up, and I was coming up with things out of the blue, automatically and spontaneously. Again, without strain or effort. I was just visualizing the pool in the morning and then acting differently the rest of the day. And the revenue came. Like this, and again, the numbers are not important. This was my monthly sales at the time. And for some of you, you could say, well, wow, you think August was a bad month? I'd kill to make $19,000 in revenue in a month. That's amazing. Other, others watching might go, dude, I make $19,000 a minute. Like, no big deal. The numbers are not important, the totals. It's the growth. So this is what happened to me. I started visualizing in late August, early September, and what happened was after 30 days of this, I tripled my revenue. Like, look at October, right? I tripled my revenue. And it's only gone up and gone higher since then. And that was all a result of this visualization process. And here's the pool, right? It literally happened. I literally have this pool now in my yard, and I have my kids jumping in, and we're playing the music, and we're living this dream, and it's real. It happened. And again, there was nothing to justify it at the time. Five figures in debt, completely struggling, worst month ever in my business, and look what happened. And all of it was visualizing. There was no new tactics, techniques, new talents. It was all mindset. So here's the thing, and I really want you to understand this, the key tip here. Your brain will figure it out. You just need to give it the goal. Like I gave it the goal of I want to pool and I want to make this much money, and my brain came up with the ideas subconsciously. Like you don't have to strain and strive to figure out how you'll do it, right? You give yourself that space and your brain will come up with it. Again, it's like a computer. If it, if it sees that you want to achieve this goal, it will figure out how to get the, uh, the how-to done. This is what's so awesome. And you got to remember this, and I'm guilty of this too. Working on your mindset, really understanding, it's like bathing. I think Zig Ziglar said this too. He said, if you don't do it every day, your thoughts are going to start to smell bad. Right. So this is something you do every day. 10, 20, 30 minutes a day, preferably beginning of your day, Doing these exercises, this creative visualizing, is what happens. It's what changes your self-image and unlocks your ability to achieve your goals and overcome obstacles. So now I want to put it on you. This is your turn. I want to know, are you running on autopilot? Yes or no? And if, you, if you're on the live training right now, type yes in the comments or no. Let me know in the comments, are you running on autopilot? And also... Do you want to master your mindset, to become happier and to achieve your goals? Do you feel like you're falling short? Because again, if you go back, 95% of us have these feelings of inferiority. We struggle. We're running on autopilot and it isn't positive. So do you want this? Do you want to master your mindset, become happier and achieve your goals? Yes or no? Here's the great thing. You always have a choice. Life is always about choices. So you can stay where you are or you can take a new action right? That's the choice we all have every day when we wake up. And the big thing, the best advice I ever got from my business coach, John Michael Morgan was he said, you know, you cannot be victorious if you're going to be a victim. Like if you stay where you are and it's everyone else's fault and it's the economy and it's coronavirus and it's whoever the political leaders are and blah, 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 you're never going to be victorious because you're being a victim. You're letting other people dictate whether or not you can have the life that you want. And the reality, of course, is you get to decide like no one's holding you back but you that's the big secret of all of this with mindset is the number one obstacle that you've really got to deal with typically is yourself and your mindset so the reality is if you want new results you take new action 
That's the key thing here. So when it comes to mindset, the best part is like, look at me. Like if I can do this, if you're watching this, like, why can't you, like, why can't you have a pool in your backyard? Why can't you, um, achieve whatever goals you have financially, physically, emotionally, whatever it is, there's no reason you can't. I mean, look at me, right? Guy with a bucket on his head doing this on the internet and I'm having success. And here's why. Here's why. This is the truth back to the beginning of the presentation today. Successful people are just ordinary folks, just like you, just like me, who have developed belief, mindset in themselves and what they do. Does that not get you fired up? Do you not understand? This is available to you. So here's what I would love to do. I have one more question for you. Are you ready? Do you want to master your mindset and achieve your goals? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments, in fact, if you're on live right now, you're not watching the replay, type yes in the comments if you're ready to do this, if you want to master your mindset and achieve your goals. Type yes, tell me. I need to know I'm with my people. Glory. All right. If that's the case, I want you to get the course. I've put all of this together into Mindset Mastery. So here's the course. I'm so excited to show you what we have in there. The real big promise that you're going to understand with this course and what you're going to realize is how to master your mindset, overcome obstacles, and achieve your goals. All of it is in here, training videos, uh, templates, audios, lots of lessons. I've got 25 different quick tips, exercises, and strategies that you can use day after day to really build this. Understanding the simple secrets behind mastering your mindset, going even deeper than what we talked about today, going through the number one obstacle to massive success, how to overcome it, even how to use this on sales calls, how to really have a million dollar mindset for sales calls. You're going to get trained on that, how to deal with failure, how to overcome obstacles, specific exercises, thoughts, different ideas and strategies to overcome what we all realize, which are failures and obstacles. I'm going to dive into the secrets of top performers, helping you go from average to awesome, how to instantly improve your results. All of this is in here, personal branding, how to become a big deal online. I'm going to have my book fired up, all of it, lifetime access, 30-day risk-free guarantee. It's only $3.97. Like if you're not willing to invest $397 into you, into your mindset, into the success that you can have for the rest of your life, then I I don't know what to say because I want to make this affordable and available to everyone watching right now. Um, This is something that's game changing for you. This is for your life and your business, income improvement following self-improvement. So I want to make the investment something that's not a hurdle, not an obstacle, not fearful for you. And again, it all comes with with a 30-day risk-free guarantee. So you can try it out. You have 30 days to test everything, make sure it's a good fit. If you don't like it for any reason, you're going to get a full refund. Now, here's what I want to show you inside the course. I've got this all Uh, out in different sections. So you're going to see we've got a section on mastering your mindset, mindset and sales, the quick tips and techniques. I'm going to dive deep into the book Fired Up, which really helps you tap into your passion, your personal brand, all kinds of different techniques. There's a workbook in here. You're going to get all kinds of access to different trainings and lessons. You're really going to understand through these different Um, techniques, how to get in and get these results. So like, for instance, here's an audio lesson, the secrets of top performers. And then I've also got text included, you can download it, you're going to be able to really understand how this works, how mindset really comes together, you're going to get training replays of different mindset lessons, going to be able to give you access to those slides, presentations, templates. Oh my gosh, there's so much good stuff in here. Uh, I cannot wait for you to get your hands on this, understanding how to get a massive advantage online with personal branding, walking you through that, giving you tips and text and templates. All of it, you're gonna have lifetime access to, right? Really understanding the course. All of it is done in Thinkific. So if you already have purchased courses from me, all you have to do when you sign up today through the checkout page is you'll just see when you log into Thinkific, these are all my different courses that I have on Thinkific right now, it will just show up. And this is what Mindset Mastery will look like for you. So once you get signed up today, 
This course will be there with your other ones on Thinkific. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So all you have to do to get signed up, fill out your information here, choose your payment option. You can do a card or PayPal. It's only one payment, one payment of $397, lifetime access, free updates. I'm constantly updating and adding to this course. So new trainings, new videos, new scripts, new exercises. This is where it's at. This is really I cannot put into words how powerful this is. So I cannot wait for you to get started mastering your mindset. This is where it happens. If you want to have a new result, have a new outcome, you have that income improvement in your life, it starts with the self-improvement. And this is all my best tips, tactics, strategies, trainings, exercises on how to master your mindset, change your self-image, and really achieve whatever goals you want to achieve. Oh man, I cannot wait for you to get your hands on this. 